we're uh, meeting with Robert A. Simon, PhD, a licensed psychologist who is internationally recognized as a leader in forensic psychologist consulting with over 35 years experience in the legal domain of family law and domestic relations. The reason why I invited uh, Dr. Simon to join us, uh, we use his book, maybe a family law section published book, second edition, Forensic Psychology Consultation in Child Custody Litigation. It's one of my favorite books I've ever read on the topic. Also, uh, Dr. Simon has been a regular uh, writer on the scene of the ABA family law section, including an article in the most recent uh, edition, which is a mental health primer for family lawyers. I've been personally benefited from his writing over his entire career, having read as much uh, as I could that was published by the ABA Family Law Section and hopefully transmitted a fair amount of expertise into my practice over the decades. Uh, Dr. Simon, what do you love the most about forensic psychology? Well, first, Miles, thank you for having me. It's a privilege to do this, um, and I really, really appreciate and value the opportunity. Thank you for your kind words as well. Um, you know, what I love about what I do is I feel like I am an advocate for a healthier world. I see families as the building blocks of our society. And I understand that families morph and change, and that means that families... Um, reconfigure, divorce happens. But to the extent that we are able to help families function well and families that are transitioning from a nuclear family to a binuclear family, we have the opportunity to build strength within a brick, a block of our society. And one by one, we build a stronger, safer, more compassionate world. And that's ultimately what I'm all about. Um, as a youngster, I was always smitten with children, loved kids. And so it was a natural thing for me to study child psychology early on. I'm privileged and, and um, humbled by the opportunity given to me by families to impact the lives of their children. I think of it as a, a real privilege and enormous responsibility. Um, and, and it's, I want to interrupt you there because that's what I'm going to do for the rest of this. Why do you think your personality lines up with accepting that responsibility to make a difference in some of the most difficult situations imaginable? Why does my personality dovetail with that? Um, well, I think that I am a caretaker. I like benefiting other people's lives. Um, and I, I, I feel that there's a special source of goodness and pleasure when you know that something you've done in your life has made somebody else's life easier or better for them. Um, so there's a, it's just, it's just my, I think I was born like that. Um, but in terms of the responsibility piece of it, you know, I think one of the pitfalls for the men and women who do the work I do, because we are decision influencers, we have a direct line to the judge, right? Um, is we sometimes become a bit um, um, affectionate of our influence and what we perceive to be our, our power. Um, and... Um, I see mistakes getting made that way. And instead, I think when we see ourselves as responsible, it holds our feet to the fire and makes us, you know, suit up and show up and earn it every day. Um, and I have found quite honestly that um, the more I learn and the more I know and the more experienced I become, the more I realize I have yet to learn and don't know. And that breeds humility. And humility is where responsible people really shine. When you're humble, you take on responsibility. When you're not humble, you take on power. 
Um, and there's no place in this work for power. I hope you're right. What do you like the least about being a forensic psychologist? Um, I like the least uh, situations, people, and I, when I say people, I mean parents and lawyers who seem to value the dispute and winning the dispute over peace, over just resolution, over compromise. Um, people for whom the issue is not the issue, where staying at odds with other people seems to be what motivates. I find that really frustrating because at the end of the day, all of that conflict and all of that dispute, when it's allowed to fester, does immeasurable harm. If you could share a meal with any three individuals, living or dead, who would they be and why? Wow. Uh, Jerry Garcia, the lead guitarist for the Grateful Dead. No kidding. Um, probably Sigmund Freud. Not that I'm a Freudian or a psychoanalyst, but he is the father of modern psychiatry. And therefore, you know, my professional DNA finds its roots there. And I think oh, Barack Obama, um, because I think he's a man of rare courage and uh, ethics. Um, and he has been an individual who has been able to come out of a, of a difficult past, a, a lot of negatives against him, and rise above it to being a, in my view, a very distinguished um, human being. And I, I, I think I'd like to know how we got that mojo. If you have, if you're a lawyer and you haven't purchased Dr. Simon's book from the ABA family law section, I highly recommend you do as well as look at many of the materials that are available on the internet written for family lawyers. If somebody wants to contact you for consulting, for speaking, or for consultation on uh, for a particular case, how can they reach you, Dr. Simon? Well, thank you for asking. I, I do consult on cases all over the country um, in various different capacities that are detailed on my website. And I'm going to give you my website. It's one way to contact me. It's www.com dr-simon.com www.dr-simon.com you can email me at rsimon at dr-simon.com and my office number is 858-755-1850 um, I've been really lucky over the course of time to consult in a majority of the states and I'm happy to tell the, the listener that I have worked for Miles's law firm in the past with great joy um, and um, would be happy to, to, to speak with you if there's a matter you'd like to talk about with me. Great. Also, uh, we'll have that information down in the description as well as other uh, aspects. Also, uh, Dr. Simon, your CV is... I believe 33 pages long and very impressive um, and uh, uh, much more attractive than mine. And I need to probably hire somebody to make it look as hopefully, you know, it's not as long or as distinguished. I'm a but, chronic overachiever. What can I say? Pathological overachiever. <laughs> right. And that's where, you know, one of the questions I didn't ask was, is it, uh, is there a correlation between success and narcissism because um, of the desire for achievement to be loved? Well, I, I think early on in my life, I was driven very much by a need within myself to prove myself to myself. I think now um, my my drive to accomplish things and do things is really honestly comes from a place of wanting to be of service um, and just wanting to make a difference in the world. 
Um, and, it, you know, each of us, everybody's born with a gift. Everybody's born with a gift. And, um, you know, one of the gifts that I was have been given is the gift of being able to explain complicated concepts in plain English. And the other gift, I think, another gift I was given, it was a, just a real desire to do good by my fellow human being. Um, I'm not perfect at it, but I try. Thank you very much for your time. And I hope we'll have an opportunity to speak again in the near future. I I would very much like that. Thank you for the opportunity to be on, on, your, uh, on your video. I really appreciate it. Um, and thank you all that are, watching for hanging in there with us. And uh, Miles, again, thank you very much.